Good evening, everybody. Welcome to an edition of Skylight. My name is Luther Davis. I'm an astronomy and physics teacher at Lake Mary High School. And my goal over the next series of episodes is to teach you a little bit about the nighttime sky. An opportunity for you to go outside and witness something yourself and maybe connect with the universe in a unique way. This episode is filmed in front of a live studio audience here in my living room. Uh, I got my daughter Abigail, my wife Randy, my dog Blaze, and our technical producer tonight is my son Dash in sixth grade. So thanks for helping out everybody. You can keep the applause going as much as you want. But anyways, let's get started. Tonight's episode is about the planet Venus. Venus is the crown jewel of the evening sky when she makes an appearance either just after sunset or just before sunrise. But in the next few weeks, if you go outside just after sunset, you too can see this crown jewel and you don't need a telescope. Here we got Venus in the evening sky just at sunset. If you were to walk outside, face west, the direction that the sun sets, with time you'll see Venus actually start to set. So my technical producer Dash is going to show this to us now. And here we got Venus at sunset. And as time progresses forward, you'll see Venus slowly move towards the horizon over the next couple hours. Now it's in the evening sky. You can see that we have a few constellations around. We have Orion just to his left. And there's other constellations such as Gemini, which is kind of dim, and Cancer. But maybe some future episodes, we'll talk about some of these constellations as well. Now, again, all you have to do is go outside just after sunset face west. The bright, bright star-like object is Venus. Now, you first might say, that's a plane. Even though I told you you might think it's a plane, you'll still think it's a plane. But guess what? It's not going to go, you're not going to see wings and engines and tails and all that stuff. It will just sit there, and over the course of hours, it will slowly set to the evening sky, and it's quite, quite bright, absolutely beautiful. Now, Venus is quite a spectacular planet. Why don't I tell you a little bit about what Venus is and some of its special characteristics? Dash, why don't you go and cue us up with a little new music and maybe a PowerPoint real quick. So here we go, we have Venus. Venus is named after the goddess of love and beauty, and Aphrodite, whoa, there she is. Absolutely beautiful, goddess of love and beauty. And maybe that's because it's just so bright and brilliant in the evening sky. It's white, it, it, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. If you look at it with your, your naked eye sometimes, the clouds and the tree line and stuff like this, you can see that the sun is just set. And then there's Venus, just sticking out like a crown jewel, absolutely gorgeous. Now, Venus being the second planet from the sun, in the 1960s and 70s, we started sending probes to the planet. And um, the probes just did flybys. But guess what? Eventually, the Russians landed on Venus, and they learned about some of its special characteristics. It's got a temperature over 900 Fahrenheit. If you had a block of lead and set it onto Venus, that block of lead would actually melt. And it's got a pressure of 90 Earth atmospheres of pressure. That's equivalent. If you ever dove down to the bottom of like a 12 foot cold pool and you feel your ears about the top, imagine going down one kilometer or six tenths of a mile. That is the pressure at Venus. Venus is like a giant pressure cooker, not only with temperature, but also pressure. And then in the 1990s, NASA sent a very special probe to Venus to orbit it over and over and over, and it used radar. Here it is at the back of the space shuttle cargo bay, and you can see Earth in the background before it's launched towards Venus, it was called Magellan. The special thing about Magellan is it did its first full map of the surface of the planet. It would actually use its cloud penetrating radar, because Venus is completely covered with clouds, it was able to map the surface, and they found some spectacular objects of interest underneath. We need the cursor over to the right. There we go. So it found lava planes flowing from some of large volcanoes. In the background here, we have Maxwell Mountain. Hey, this mountain is actually comparable to the size of Mount Everest on Earth. 
We also have other mountains, kind of like Mount Ikea here on Hawaii, um, called Sif Mons, and it's called a shield volcano. We also found very unique volcanoes. Those are called pancake volcanoes. I like to think of it like when I'm making pancakes on Saturday mornings, and I take the batter and I pour up onto the, 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 the cooking plate for the pancakes, and the batter just goes, it spreads out. Imagine that that thick oozing lava came up from the bottom and then oozed out. You'd make these large pancake type structures. They're called pancake volcanoes. They're about 10 miles wide and like half a mile tall. They're actually quite large. This is a side view projection using some of that Magellan data. You can see them, there they go off into the background. There's like four pancake volcanoes right there. What else do we got? Um, there was another problem called, called the ESA or the European Space Agency, Venus Express, and it found something quite unique with Venus. It has a south polar double vortex storm. It's kind of like two hurricanes that might be actually rotating on their own, that together they rotate around each other. There's actually a special effect called the Fiji Wallar effect here on Earth that describes that, and this is an infrared image of that infrared. Uh, I mean, that, that double vortex storm at the south pole of Venus. Absolutely spectacular feature. Now, a lot of people think that Venus looks very, very similar to Earth. It might actually harbor life and stuff like that because it's about the same size. But here we got two naked planets. We got Earth on one side, we got Venus on the other side. When are they naked? They don't have clouds. But you can see they're about the same size. They have about the same density. They have the same composition. But they're actually quite different. Venus, with its pressure cooking atmosphere, very, very hot, very hostile to life. No life can exist at Venus just because it is just too hostile. In fact, it is the hottest planet at the surface, hotter than Mercury, because Venus has a greenhouse effect that raises its temperature by almost 400 degrees. Venus would actually be 400 degrees cooler if it didn't have its clouds. But with its clouds and it traps this radiation, all of a sudden Venus's temperature goes way up. So the planets are somewhat similar in composition and density, but there are also some other characteristics that make them a little bit different. This is one that I find very, very peculiar. And I, when I share with my astronomy students, it's kind of given us a perspective a little bit on Earth. Venus does have volcanoes. In fact, that same probe that found that double vortex at the South Pole saw that Venus had active volcanoes. It measured composition differences in its atmosphere. But when you map out the volcanoes on Venus, you'll notice that they tend to be somewhat randomly displaced. And this is how Venus uh, appeases that internal pressure uh, within its core and mantle, is by volcanoes that are randomly placed. Unlike Earth, here's Earth. Earth also appeases that pressure with volcanoes at plate boundaries. So on Earth, you can actually see that the plates are where all the volcanoes are. All the red triangles here are volcanoes. And you can see, unlike Venus, if I go back, there's no plate boundaries. But on Earth, whoa, that was a sneak peek to what we're getting to. Check this out. Here on Earth, you get the plate boundary. Now, Earth is truly unique in our solar system because it has plate tectonics. But are we the oddball or are we the norm? We don't know because there's only one other planet about the same size as us, and that's Venus. Venus has random volcanoes. Earth has volcanoes unless they're hot spots, but we're mostly at plate boundaries. So a little bit more about something unique when you observe Venus, and that's this. You might be looking at this and say, whoa, check it out, the moon. This is not the moon. This is the planet Venus. And you can see this effect with powerful binoculars or even small telescopes. Venus goes through phases like the moon does. It's actually a very, very neat thing to witness over time. Now you might be saying, why? Well, think of this. Venus orbits the sun closer than Earth does. So there's gonna be times when Venus is between the sun and Earth and we see the shadow side of Venus. Then there's gonna be times when Venus is on the other side of the sun and we see the full disk, what we call a full moon. And then anywhere in between, we can see a gibbous phase, which is kind of like egg shape. We can see a quarter phase where you see half of it, or you can even see beautiful crescents. Let me give you an idea of what Venus does with time. 
so, if I come over here, back to, whoa, 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 oh, that, that, that was also another little sneak peek. But I'm going to go back to this planetarium program. And what I've queued up here is Venus as it looks right now. And the neat thing that I can do with this planetarium program is I can change dates and times. So I'm going to go up here. This is April 12th in the year 2020. And I'm going to simply do one keystroke, and that's April 13th, April 14th, April 15th. You might say, well, I don't see much going on. But what if I hold this down? Watch what Venus does with time. Not only does it get larger because it's getting closer to Earth, but you can see it's becoming more and more of a crescent. So around late May, Venus becomes, or early June, what we call a new moon, and it's very, very large. And then after early June, it passes the sun and starts receding away from Earth, and it becomes a quarter phase, and then a gibbous phase, and then eventually it reaches a full moon phase. Now the reason that it's small when it's full moon phase is keep in mind, it's way on the far side of the sun. And then eventually it starts leaving the full moon phase. We're already to May of 2021 and watch what happens. Here comes that beautiful crown jewel in the night again as they give us phase in September of 2021. And it all sent a quarter phase. And here comes the crescent. And this is where she is right about now. So the next time Venus actually looks in the evening sky, similar to she does now in April of 2020, will be December of 2021. And then eventually it'll go through the whole cycle again. And so you get an effect with time of Venus just going through the evening sky as a beautiful crown jewel, but also changing phases like the moon. I encourage you, if you have a small telescope or binoculars, go ahead and look at Venus. And you might be able at this time, be able to detect the small crescent nature of its phase. You, thank you. In fact, there's times when Venus actually trans, transits with sun. Uh, the last time it did this was in 2012, and the planet Venus went right across the disk of the sun, and you see it silhouetted. Here's a nice close-up of that. Isn't that cool? That's awesome looking. Um, Venus, as a bit of a review, not only does it have volcanoes, it has spacecraft from Earth, it has pancakes, it has phases. She's got it. This is one of my... Uh, favorite images of Venus. She's an absolute beautiful, like, ball of cotton candy. Think of that. I just love that image. Venus is absolutely beautiful. So to review one aspect tonight, how can you go ahead and see Venus yourself? What we'll do is we'll go ahead and back to the planetarium program. And We'll go back to sunset. And all you have to do is go out and look west, look for that bright star-like object, watch Venus set with time. Eventually it's gonna be behind the trees and eventually behind the horizon. But over the next several weeks, go out and take a look. Thank you so much to my live studio audience, my technical producer, for an episode of Skylights. And just remember, when it comes to the sky, keep pointing up. Good job, buddy. <laughs>